Hello, um, my name is Richard Ramey Jr. and this is um, part three or four of my chronicles. I don't know what part it is because I don't pay attention, <laughs> but y'all can pay attention. This is about a prison story. This is about um, when I was in the chronic mental health unit and um, I was locked up next to this dude and he was my friend for about six months. He was about... Mm, to describe the situation, he was about six foot four, two hundred forty pounds. Um, he was pretty cool. We shot game of the same bitch. Um, everything was going good. One night, um, what happened was was um, I was in the cell next to him. I was about to pull up a batch of wine, and I heard him. I heard him laughing and smiling and all night long. And I was like, okay, you know, this is cool. But then what happened was, uh, are you talking to me? No, I'm talking to the video. So sorry. So anyways, uh, about two in the morning, I'm about to pull out this batch of wine, and he's laughing all night in the cell. After six months of him being normal, um, I woke up to him laughing. So I went to sleep. I woke up. He was still laughing. So what happened was uh, next day I came out, um, went out to the day room with him. Um, he walked up to this little white dude. And he put his uh, arms around him, and he, uh, he choked him out, and he said, you're going to give me some ass. And uh, he choked the little dude out right in the day room. I was like, damn, <laughs> that's fucked up. So anyways, I wouldn't think none of it, you know what I'm saying? It's not like he dragged, dragged the dude into the cell and raped him or anything, but he still, he, he choked his ass out. So then what happened next was uh, he started getting real aggressive with people. And um, he was going around, he was like, I'll knock your punk ass out. Uh, he was going around threatening people. And um, it wasn't no thing to me because it was normal situation for as far as the prison environment. But uh, I thought it was abnormal because we'd lock in at night and he would he'd laugh all night. It's almost like he never went to sleep because I'd go to sleep and he'd be laughing and I'd wake up and he'd still be laughing. And um, I was around this dude for six months and he didn't he didn't he didn't exhibit this type of behavior. So it, it was abnormal to me. And um my, my my behavior right now might be abnormal to you, but I'm just going to give you a, a – I'm going to shoot straight with you and tell you about the situation at hand. So uh, the next morning I woke up. Dude was still laughing. He was still going about his business, being aggressive, scaring everybody. Like I said, he was about six foot four, probably about 240, 260 pounds, working out every day, playing basketball. So uh, one day uh, after a few days of him laughing, he – came up to me and he said, I want to show you my paperwork. And that's something that you usually don't do in prison. You don't you don't pay attention to people's paperwork or nothing like that. So he comes up, he, he shows me his paperwork. So uh, I, I was like, all right, I'll, ch I'll check it out because this is my guy, like I said. You know what I'm saying? So I go in the cell. I start reading his paperwork. Um, come to find out um, what this dude did was I – he was in a psychosis when he caught his case. He walked into this dude's house. He held him a knife point. He stabbed him a few times. He tied him up. He raped him in the ass with a broomstick. Um, medical records show that he detached his anus from his colon. Um, so I'm like, damn. <laughs> it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's in the joint for some fucked up shit. So... Next morning, the doors pop open. I go back. I hand him back his paperwork. I was like, I'm not going to tell anybody what you're in prison for. You know what I'm saying? Uh, about five or six hours go by. I'm up at the kiosk. It's a JPay kiosk. I'm trying to text my girl. Um, I'm lying. I didn't have no girl. I'm just texting somebody just to tell them hi. Noon, they wasn't going to text me back because I hadn't gotten mail or visits and probably 10 years um and this dude walks up to me the dude that uh let me read his paperwork and he said uh he said you know what time it is and i said what time is it and he said you took the bait i said what do you mean and he said you've been walking around here with your shirt off like you're rocky cute little white boy you took the bait I was like, what do you mean by that? And he said, motherfucker, you know what you read. You know what time it is. You're a seller my cell. You took the bait. <clears throat>
at this point in time, um, from the experiences I've had and the time I've been down, you know, this this ain't no prison rape story, but it was what it was and is what it is. And uh, at that time, I just got uh, a moment of peace and calmness. And I looked at him and I said, uh, please don't threaten me. <laughs> don't make yourself a threat to me. And he said again, you know what time it is, you took the bait. At that point in time, a mentor came in, he stepped in, he, he, he got the dude, he got his, he got his attention. So uh, he, he, uh, he, he got him out of the way, he asked him what was going on. Well, so when the mentor got his attention, the first thing I did was I went and put my shoes on. I put my shoes on, I ran upstairs, I went to my homeboys. Uh, dude, I've been locked up with for a little bit. And I said, hey, buddy, um, I need a knife. <laughs> And he said, I ain't going to give you a knife because I ain't got one, but what's going on? And I said, nothing's going on, but here's a list of everybody that owes me. And uh, I'm about to go fuck somebody up. And he's like, what do you mean? And I said, well, uh, I'll holler at you in a minute. I'm about to fuck somebody up. So uh, I went back downstairs. Uh, dude was still down there rapping to the mentor. Um, I hollered at the CO. And I said, um, I need to clean my cell out. So the CEO looked at me and she looked at me kind of strange. Like she had some suspicions about what was going on. And she said, uh, she said, uh, are you okay? And I said, yes, I'm okay. I just need to clean my cell. And, uh, she opened up the cage. Um, I proceeded to get the mop bucket, the mop. The plunger. Um, I pulled this shit out, pulled the mop bucket and everything out of the closet, walked into my cell, grabbed the mop ringer out of the mop bucket, pulled it to my cell. I walked up the four or five step concrete steps it was, walked up to the dude, and I said, Hey, buddy. And he turned around and I hit that motherfucker as hard as I could with the mop ringer. It was like swinging a baseball bat. <laughs> when when I hit him with a mop ringer, um, pieces of the mop ringer went flying everywhere. And uh, his response was to, uh, you know, they say that they got that they got that phrase of retard strength. Well, this dude was in the middle of a psychosis, you know what I'm saying? And he was trying to rape my butt, <laughs> and I smashed him with the mop ringer, and I hit him so hard with it, and he put his hands up, and uh, his response to this was a. Uh, he punched me in the fucking face so hard that it knocked me down the stairs. Uh, he proceeded to get on top of me. Uh, when he got on top of me, um, I started taking chunks out of his leg. Arr, arr. Just started biting him as hard as I could because he was a big dude. And when I started taking chunks out of his leg, he started taking chunks out of my back. Arr, biting the shit out of me. You know what I'm saying? So when the police came up... Uh, when they came up, they was biting each other, and um, they sprayed us both with mace. Um, they hauled him off the seg. They pulled me over to the infirmary. They did a rape kit on me. Um, they told me to come over there. They wanted me to pull my pants down. Told me to spread my ass cheeks. Um, they seen that I was cool. They said, what happened, Mr. Ramey? And I said, uh, well, uh, if the camera shows it, it's, it's going to show some guy approaching me and talking to me. And then it's going to show me about five minutes later coming up and beating the bitch with a mop bringer. And that's what happened. And um, come to find out, after they did the rape kit on me, uh, they discovered that this dude had had multiple incidents of assault on staff, sexual assault, rapes throughout the incarceration throughout his incarceration they knew about his case so they took the mop ringer that i broke into pieces by beating his ass with it and they they took it out of there they didn't take pictures of it they didn't write me up on a class a write up and uh and i survived that incident and um when the incident was over after i heard he got moved off the segregation uh, you know, he was in a mental health unit, so I figured they was going to let him out in a couple weeks. So I melted a razor inside of a toothbrush, 
and I was ready for him because I wanted to protect my manhood and, and my butt. And uh, he never came out of there again. And I seen him about three years later, and he was uh, he was rubbing shit in his dreadlocks. And he was my friend before that. And that's what the type of shit happens in the joint. You know what I'm saying? And the reason I'm saying this is because I want to tell you to stand your ground. Because if you don't, you'll be somebody's bitch. And I ain't nobody's bitch. <laughs> and that's all I got to say about that. <laughs>